Online communities, especially fandoms, have a problem. We can't keep saying that we don't. We can't keep responding to accusations with, but we'd never let people like that feel welcome in our community. This does not represent us without backing those words up. I have grown tired of having to tell people this. There is no community that is exempt from self-criticism. There is no community on Earth that does not have problems. Fandoms are no exception. And so, we have a moral obligation to engage in the hard conversations on accountability, community regulation, and to make sure that those of malicious intent feel no comfort or safety in our spaces. But Shiloh, isn't that censorship? Well, first of all, why would that matter? We should want to censor those who do not value consent, boundaries, or personal safety. That should be something that we, as people, should be proud to do. Perhaps this is the devil-worshipping heathen in me, but free will, autonomy, and personal safety seem so much more important than some abstract sense of tolerance and acceptance. What are we, bronies? Secondly, no, it's not. It absolutely is not. Censorship is the oppression of dissent by governing or authoritarian bodies. Censorship is banning literature like To Kill a Mockingbird for problematic language, or forcing Ray Bradbury to remove all the alcohol and sex from Fahrenheit 451. Censorship is not allowing teachers to use the word gay in schools. Censorship is trying to eliminate dialogues about critical race theory because it makes white people uncomfortable. That is censorship, because it prevents education to the masses. It prevents dissent from circulating to the masses. Because fandoms are not government and do not have any sort of federal level power, let alone state or city level, it is not censorship to hold accountable and make unwelcome those who make people unsafe. No. Jesus Christ, why is it so noisy in this neighborhood? So no, what we are discussing is not censorship. What I am discussing is the exclusion, ostracization, and punishment of those who actively engage in abusive and inhuman behavior. Direct and visible consequences for the choices of those who do harm. We need to start talking about the problems in our communities. The Marco 180s. The Kiro the Wolves, the Don't Hug Cacti, the Hypnotist Sapphos, the RC Foxes. When people are proven to be animal abusers, sexual predators, or fascists, we need to ostracize them without resignation or hesitation. Yes, there are instances where people with harmful opinions can be de-radicalized and shown that their behaviors and choices are harmful. Sometimes people can see the light and try to get better. But once someone's actions actively harm or make unsafe the general community, once someone is directly harmed by the choices and actions of a person, we cannot hesitate. Folks like Coyote Lovely, Lagovert, Caswar Fox, and Labrat have been excellent about exposing and holding accountable predatory and abusive people that walk freely in our spaces. Though their videos may be hard to watch sometimes for people who are sensitive to certain language, they're exceptionally competent and well-made videos with a lot of information, and these YouTubers are worth giving the space and listening to. Now, I need you to sit with me for a moment and think about something. There are literal, there are literal swastika-wearing Nazis. 
people who intentionally spread HIV by deceiving people into having unprotected sex. Scat fetishists that leave used diapers on the cars and strangers for the thrill, an actual biohazard. Self-admitted zoosadists and child abusers. And spaces infested by those who don't care for the harm their choices create. As someone who has more than once found that people in my community were abusers using me and my friends for troll shielding in the hopes that they wouldn't be caught. We have a moral responsibility to hold these people accountable. It's exhausting, and it sucks, and it's super depressing, but we have to. I have been taken advantage by these kind of people far too many times, and let monsters far too close to my heart. So I say this with experience. We can have no mercy for the wicked. But what should accountability look like? Well, for one, we need to be a lot more willing to kick people out of our community spaces if they violate the rules of those spaces. Part of me thinks having a blacklist of those who have violated your community's rules and sharing them with other community leaders might be a good start. Providing reasoning and evidence for each entry on the blacklist would help as well, so that people can verify your claims and do their own research. In addition, accountability as a consequence needs to fit the misdeed done. If someone is in possession of illegal materials containing child or animal abuse, or is actively involved in such matters, one form of accountability would be for them to turn themselves into the authorities, or sign up to a mental health clinic and avoid being online socially during the first year of their treatment to prevent reoffending. If they have sold materials of the type, perhaps part of that accountability would be donating an equivalent amount of what they earned to an abuse prevention charity or local health clinic. If someone is being held accountable for a history of racism and fascist behavior, perhaps encouraging them to donate to GoFundMes for low-income families of color or donating to the ACLU could be part of showing that they have changed. Accountability is, by my measure, not just a way to punish perpetrators of hate, cruelty, and violence, but should also function as a form of harm reduction and rehabilitation. Though, also in my opinion, there are some forms of harm that should be met with harsher consequences than simply a trip to the mental hospital and a donation to charity. There are some things that require stronger hands, like child abuse, animal predation, sexually predatory behavior, and active participation in fascist violence. We also need to make sure we have room in our spaces for victims of these abuses to talk about what's happened to them, make them feel heard, and give them spaces to feel safe. Humans are social creatures, and have taken care to tend to one another's needs for eons. It takes work to accommodate the vulnerable, the disabled, the systemically oppressed, the economically disparaged. It takes emotional labor, patience, kindness, and excellent communication regarding boundaries and respect. But it is always worth it to do the right thing. I used to use my platform as a means of educating people on the dangerous individuals in our community. I no longer have the energy, space, or time to do so, and that has left me vulnerable to those who wish to do me harm for my part in that conversation. I had to step away, because the things I was doing here were finally starting to touch my real life. I do not regret a single moment of the space that I gave for victims to come forward about their troubles and the things that had been done to them. But I no longer have the emotional energy, space, or time to put in that much effort. So I encourage you to talk about these problems.
have conversations about the hard topics, give people consequences for their choices, make sure your fandom spaces are well moderated, and do not make it entirely up to YouTubers who have a lot on their plate. Make sure your fandom spaces are well moderated, have reporting systems in place, and establish accountability standards for people in your community who have done harm especially if you're a person of high position in the community, like a fursuit maker, a pop fur, a YouTuber, or an animator. Protecting the vulnerable in your community should always be a priority, and the minute you choose to be a content creator, you have a responsibility to regulate your community spaces and make sure that people like that do not feel safe among your community. When you have a following, people will listen. We have an obligation as a community, as content creators, to set a good example. You shouldn't be making content if you're not willing to put in the work. Hey guys, end credits patch here. If you like my stuff and want to see more, feel free to click the sub button. It's free and you can always unsubscribe if you change your mind. Special thanks to my Lapis Tier patrons, Leo Convoy Reviews, Volgenhorn, and Wolf Amaril, and my Adventuring Tier patrons, Firepaw and Kyle Nicole, as well as Sam, who is a supporter on both Ko-fi and Patreon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.